One year ago, I did a video showcasing all of the gym DIYs that we have here in the basement. And in that amount of time, we have done more DIYs. We've replaced some of the existing DIYs and we have plans for future DIYs. So I wanted to cover all of that with you here in this video. I'm gonna cover these DIYs in order of least versatile to most versatile, but that is a little bit of a loose structure though since some of these DIYs are DIYs that add on to existing DIYs, so we have to cover those first for the other ones to make sense. But before we get into the DIYs, hi, my name is Ryan Chetaway, founder of ChetawayTraining.com, where we turn skinny guys into jacked men. If you want more information on body transforming training and nutrition topics every Sunday, consider subscribing. Let's jump into the video. First up is weight plate storage. Weight plate storage isn't sexy, but it's necessary. So let's talk about it. This is actually a skateboard ramp that has three holes drilled through it and then three metal rods slotted through and welded on to make weight plate storage. Over here, we have a fish tank stand that's flipped upside down with a two by 12 that's laid on top of it to create weight plate storage and also a little table to put your workout books on and stuff like that. And then over there, simply just a little piece of scrap trim to keep the bumper plates from rolling away. We are going to be replacing the bumper plate storage here soon. That part of it is going to stay, but we're just gonna add some slots to help keep the bumper plates upright. And then on this side, we're gonna replace that little piece of trim. We're gonna build a little rectangular box with slots in it to hold the bumper plates on this side. And eventually, I don't know when this DIY is gonna happen, it's a little bit lower on the to-do list, we're gonna get the plates on the wall, I believe. I think we're gonna go two little rails on the wall on both sides of the rack and then put the plates up on the wall so that this isn't in the floor anymore, but I don't know when that one's gonna happen. Next up, let's talk about protection. It's very important to protect your bar. And most racks come with pin pipe safeties, which are just painted metal. And if you fail a lift or you set your bar down too hard on a pin pipe safety, it's gonna mess up your knurly. And you obviously don't want that, especially if you have a nice expensive barbell. So an easy solution that we had previously done was to just take the little foam sleeves that came on the sleeves of the barbell for protection and shipping and then we slid those over the pin pipe safety and that did a pretty good job until we eventually upgraded to safety straps. Another more permanent solution, I actually saw a couple of different people comment on my previous video saying that they just took braided vinyl tubing, split it long ways and then placed that over the top of their pin pipe safety or another option would be this handy dandy spray bed liner. You could just hit the pin pipe safety with this. If you wanted something that looked a little bit more purpose built and would also protect your bar as well. Also on the topic of bar safety, the safeties that come with Rogue racks, they are actually bare metal on the end. There's UHMW plastic on the bottom and on the back but the front is actually still bare metal. So when you go to roll the bar back to do a bench or to do a squat, you're actually digging your bar into bare metal. And the solution that we have used for, I guess, almost a couple of years now would be to just take these little rubber bands, again, that came on the barbell in shipping, and then we just taped it on the end there. And it worked really well for a long time. It's been on there a couple years, and this one has finally broke, and this one is maybe looking like it's on its last leg. So a couple of options that you could use to fix this are, again, the spray bed liner that I had just mentioned, or you could take a flex tape or UHMW tape and put it on the end here and then cut that down to size. You'd have a nice, neat, more purpose built looking solution, looks nice and will also protect your bar. This DIY is a little bit more niche because most people are gonna put their dumbbells somewhere and never move them again. But this is actually part of a video idea that I'm working on for a home gym that would fit inside of a closet. 
And so the idea, part of the idea anyway, is to take these U-bolt clamps, put some casters on the bottom of this Nuobel rack so that if you're in a small space and you do not have a room to dedicate to a home gym, that you could roll your dumbbells out into the living room or into your bedroom, work out, and then roll it back into your closet. Probably the cheapest and most simple DIY out of all of the DIYs in this video is one that we actually replaced since the last video, and this is an idea that I actually got from Garage Gym Reviews, which is to take a tennis ball, split it open, put the barbell inside, and then you can shove your barbell in the corner for a DIY landmine setup. And this part, to add on to it, isn't technically a DIY. This little eyelet attachment to slide on the sleeve of your barbell cost about 20 bucks. But the reason why I'm considering it a DIY is simply because it will allow you to mimic some cable exercises if you don't have a cable. Next is another very cheap DIY, which is simply a small stack of taped together or glued together wood that you can use for block presses or you can use for calf raises. And we don't use this one too terribly much anymore because since last year's video, we actually put out another video where we built a purpose-built DIY calf raise platform. And what we did in that video is we actually reinforced this horizontally as well as vertically so that you can press your feet up against the side wall of the platform so that you can use it for low rows as well as calf raises. The next one is even cheaper because assuming you have two barbells, this one is actually free and that is a DIY dip station. Simply take your two barbells, lay it across two J cups in your rack or if your rack is too wide to do that, you could just lay them across your safety and then boom, you have two parallel bars that you can do dips with. You can also use this for neutral grip inverted rows or you can even use a strap safety or a bench to put your feet on and use this for bench dips. This one isn't technically a DIY in the sense that I did purchase this biking handle. I did not make this biking handle, but it is a DIY in the sense that we are using it for a couple of purposes that it's not originally intended to be used for. So what we have here is a DIY calf raise machine where we simply put the Viking handle on the end of a landmine setup. We put our DIY calf block down and then boom, you have a seated calf raise machine. And in the previous video that we did a year ago, there was actually another DIY calf raise machine that I showcased that felt even better and even more like a purpose-built calf raise machine versus this one, where we took that eyelet attachment, put it on the end with a couple of clamps on each side, and put a lap pull-down bar and a couple of pull noodles for padding and had the same basic setup, but the bar that went across your legs was able to freely move and it felt a little bit better, but it did take a while to set up and to break down. So I found myself using it less and less over time because I was taking more time to set it up than I was actually taking to do the exercise. And one of the hallmarks of a good DIY, in my opinion, is not only the ability to do an exercise, but the ability to do it efficiently. If it's fiddly and you don't use it, it's not a good, a good DIY. And so that's why we got rid of the previous version of this calf raise machine. Next, the multi-grip pull-up bar DIY underwent a few different revisions. First of all, we just started with this multi-grip lap pull-down bar, which we placed across the top of the rack, which allowed us to have multiple neutral grip options, as well as your regular pronated and supinated grip options from the regular pull-up bar that comes on basically every squat rack. But I wanted more grip options, such as a 45 degree grip option. So we did a video where we made a DIY pull-up bar out of metal pipe, but in the end, the conclusion of that video was that it's actually almost as expensive to build 
a pull-up bar as it is to purchase a purpose-built pull-up bar. So this one actually ended up becoming a non-DIY and I ultimately purchased the Titan multi-grip pull-up bar. This is without a doubt, hands down, my favorite and most useful DIY that I have ever built, which is a high pulley, low pulley, single cable setup. And it only cost about 50 bucks to make. With a high pulley, low pulley setup and a little bit of imagination, you can train literally every single muscle in your entire body. And I would say that the versatility of a high-low cable setup is only outmatched by maybe dumbbells and barbells. I do have a video showing four different setup options. This particular option is a post-mounted option, which if you're not building this in the basement, you might not have this availability. But I do have a video showing how to do four different cable options, including one that will attach to a squat rack if you don't want it to be permanently mounted to something. And as an add-on to this, if you have a couple of single handles, a couple of ankle straps, and a chain, you can do all sorts of exercises and even replace a couple of dedicated workout machines with this cable setup. You can do single arm or double arm Bayesian cable curls. You can do kickbacks. You can do leg extensions, leg curls, reverse crunches, leg raises. Your imagination is the limit when it comes to this setup. Another excellent use for your DIY cable machine is one of my all-time favorite exercises, lat pulldowns. The only problem with lat pulldowns though is as you progress and as the weight that you're pulling becomes heavier than your body weight, the weight that you're trying to pull is gonna end up pulling you off the ground rather than you pulling the weight down. So you have to have some way to secure yourself down. A traditional lap pull machine will have a little bar that goes across your lap, but that's not something that's necessarily realistic for a DIY setup. And my previous solution, which worked really well, was to take a weight pin, put a few plates on it, put it under a regular old chair, and then get a towing strap, go under the weight plates, and strap myself down. It worked really well, but it took a lot of setup. And as I said a moment ago, a good DIY is a DIY that is efficient and doesn't take up a lot of time. So I got tired of doing this and ended up just doing higher rep sets with lat pull downs so that I didn't have to set up the lat pull seat. And then I had an idea that I should have had to start with, which was to simply take the bench that we have here, which is the rep AB5100, which weighs almost 100 pounds. You can take a single 45 pound weight plate, slap it down on top of this for a little bit of added weight, and then run the same toe strap under this. So the setup now only takes maybe 10 seconds, whereas before it took like two minutes. Another excellent DIY that is an accessory to our DIY cable machine is this belt squat machine. Very simple here, we have a couple dumbbells to keep the platform in place as we're doing the exercise. And then all you have to do is come in and clip yourself in with the squat and boom, you have a belt squat machine. And those are the current DIYs that we have here in the basement gym. I have build guides for several of these DIYs down in the description. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you next week. Which sounds like a very durable, very, um, dang it.